Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlisle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be... Mary fainted when she heard Madame Carlyle was still alive, and she didn't even see it herself. It was so... This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. So, I just need to check. That's a bit excessive, I think, considering the fact that I spotted no less than two routes to get inside the house unseen. We know what we're doing, sir. Don't worry about that. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion 
are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments, or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual I... situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. 
Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Greetings, sir. Yeah, hey, Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here's the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Hi there. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps do you prefer searching the manor for clues first? So, how long have you been working here? About a month now. Ugh, sorry, man, but you're just making me feel a little uncomfortable now, okay? About a month now. You're American. What on earth are you doing in this shithole? A girl like you belongs in clubs in London. I bet you're a great dancer. I don't like dancing. What about restaurants, then? You like food? I know some great places. You should come visit. I'll take you somewhere really nice. Talk later, OK? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Oh, uh, just remembered I went for a stroll behind the greenhouse last night. Maybe that's where it is. What is? My lost button. The one you couldn't find at the graveyard. Wouldn't it be a good idea for you to go and look for it? Now? A good idea. Yes. That 
and a woman is a tad too busy for my taste. What is it now? She scolded Mary for not making the bed the way she prefers it. It's so unfair. She'd just discovered Zachary's dead body and was all shook up. I tried to tell her that, and do you know what she said? She said, things will change around here. I can promise you that. And her son Patrick is just as bad. Just look at Rosie. He has no respect. Praying on the girls like that. But he was such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. You mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Hello, sir. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. Except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. How are things coming along inside? Is everything ready for tomorrow? I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. I oh, know I have to, but Amy thinks she might be pregnant. I'm gonna be a dad. That is Amy the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. And now are we one? What about Ray? Really nice. Spend a few bucks. A girl like you deserves that. I don't know. Did you give the Fitzpatrick token to Madame Carlyle's daughter? Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her, that sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler? Oh, of course.
They call all of you in today. I've never seen so many gardeners here at the same time. I think so. A funeral is a big event. A lot of important people will be here. And the woman who's in today. Too bad. Hey. How are you? Mary is so upset. She's never seen a dead body before. Life can be tough sometimes. And that detective asked to come here. Madame Carlyle must believe Zachary was murdered. Why else ask him to snoop around? Oh, I feel weak in my knees from all the tension here. Don't worry, I'm sure everything will settle down soon. You're not allowed to be here, sir. Please leave. That's good, sir. Keep walking. There's nothing here. How are you, sir? Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot... Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want? Casey, for God's sake, Emma. But why don't we get any kind of explanation? It's bloody rude, that's what it is. Making us 
come here to play funeral and then show up like nothing's the least bit strange? Oh, don't get your knickers all twisted. I'm telling you, she's not fit to be in charge anymore. You always led by example, rather than by words and meaningless gestures. Like hugs and encouragement. Just a single spontaneous caress, what a difference that would have made. Right. I clearly remember when I was five. I climbed a tree and did not make my way down. Groceries arrive. I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But all that is safe with Ethel. She never misses a step. Gossiping at work, bird. I'm getting a headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not. Should I? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Stay in my place in London. You can never come over. Give me some tips. I'm quite happy here, thanks.
command. There's some kind of commotion down here. Uh, Have a look around. Ah, crap. Not again. Yeah, keep it real. Hey, so put a pin in it. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. My parents would hate him. Now, this is interesting for 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. Keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing?
Mr. Fernsby. Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. I received the vault token for the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. Did I understand... Madame Carlyle. Mr. Whitmer, you found proof of what happened to my brother? No, not yet. Go and see Fernsby when you do. I received the vault token for the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. Did I understand correctly that I should give it to Rebecca in case of your death? Exactly. She holds the other one. I want her to have the file on Arthur Edwards if I die. You're not fearful she'll be in trouble if she knows? She will knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurts. All right there. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully she'll never have to get involved at all. Should I talk to him? I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night.
read all the time. Literature and, and such. That's nice. All well downstairs. How Gregory has for his How can you be so relaxed? A pupil is more fear in me. What's going on about that? This whole situation isn't normal. Well, how do you think it affects Patrick? He must be so confused. I don't like how Alexa's way of running things impacts our son. What's up? My dear brother, finally in peace. How I regret the pact we made. How I wish I had acted on my own. The guilt over the life we took is what presses me forward. Always makes me want to make it worth the horrible thing.
An old letter, 47. Never opened. Must have slid under the secret door nearly 46 years ago. It states that Alexa Carlyle's older brother, Montgomery, wanted Alexa to become the heir to the Carlyle Empire instead of himself. Hmm. Interesting. You're an excellent detective, 47. Uncovering truths half a century old. If you frame it correctly, I believe you could use the information to convince Madame Carlyle that Zachary committed suicide. Maybe you should ask Mr. Fernsby to see her. Or perhaps you feel like digging a bit more. Hello there, sir. I'm ready to present my conclusion. Very well. Let's talk in my office. Good man. Looking good. Your detective skills have gained you access to the Lion's Den, 47. Now. Go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your brother committed suicide. I need to see some evidence to believe that, Mr. Whitmer. Zachary was found dead in a room locked from the inside. He died from a rare poisonous plant he cultivated himself. He believed you were dead, and a suicide note explained that he did not have the courage to go on without you. That's what I don't buy. I cared for him deeply, but the truth is he hated my guts. My death would not make him commit suicide, I can promise you that. Perhaps the death of your older brother, Montgomery, then. I have found evidence showing that you and Zachary killed him nearly 50 years ago. I believe that was when Zachary turned recluse. Your brother recently uncovered proof that your past deeds were for nothing. A letter from Montgomery stating that he wanted you, Madame Carlyle, to take over from your father instead of himself, as you were better suited to the job. Everything would have turned out the way you wanted, without anyone dying. What broke Zachary once, now destroyed him. And you saw this letter? I did. Oh, Zachary. How oh, royally I fucked up. Mr. Whitmer, I'm sorry, I, 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 I just need to gather my thoughts. Right. The payment for your services, have you decided on an amount? Arthur Edwards. You have a file on him. Arthur Edwards? How do you... I see. Well played. 
For many, many years I feared what I'd see when I finally met death. And now you sit before me, and I feel only peace. You see, I believe life is a fair fight, and I lost spectacularly in every way imaginable. It is time for me to leave the pit. Oh, before I get to that, your reward. The fire you want is in the safe. A last wish from a dying woman. Get Edwards and make him suffer. Good work, Please 47. Remain seated. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Right. Time to well, take well, care well. of Madame Carlyle. So long. I need some privacy. Thank you. Hello, sir. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Oh, shit. Hey! Forget his Pick eyes. that up. So swollen, it didn't even look like Zachary. I've never seen a dead body before. It must be all... Do you think it was a suicide? Hey, you! Stop right there, sir! Why else? Okay, that's it! Right, I'm, I'm... You will die today! Oh, fuck! Somebody has to out Get the advantage! Seen him? Anyone? Shit! Not here. Command, I've arrived at the location and it looks clear. Back to smoking and joking. Over. I'm gonna rip your arm off and slap you with a soggy head, you little coward! Stay alert! Look over there! Sure thing. Come in, JHQ. In the library area clear. Over. I was driving me by to leave the area. Yes, no worries. Reveal yourself. We're combing the area. There's no escape. Give it up. Got nothing.
What's going on here? What happened? Oh, command? Apparently there's a guy out Anybody there, there? A real pain in the arse. Come in! Do we have a description of the real. suspect? Be right. He was wearing jeans and a dark blue jacket. Yep, got it! The perp is here! He has to be! Find him! Roger that. Assassin Actual, this is Alpha One Actual. Area is clear. Please advise. Over. This is it! It's safety's off ice peel! You're on your own time now! I got a bad feeling about this! Oh, shit! Come on, do you read? Here we go again! Okay, that's it. No more games. Nothing here. Show yourself. It's up to you whether this ends good or bad. Come on. Take him down! Tango is lost. Move, find him. You yeah, I've right, got man. nothing here either, sir. Where the hell did he go? Copy, Command. Still looking. No sign of the perp. What's the problem? Some ass is making a lot of noise. You ought to do something. Any description on possible suspects? First, I thought he was that private investigator guy. This is our code. I could have sworn. Guys, planning to give the whole grounds an oval. Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit!
Diana can't help you now. You need to find Olivia. She will know what to do. <laughs> I wish there had been more time. And then there were none. Thank you, Miss Burnwood. Now, it's my turn. Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Yeah! Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now.